So in this session today, I'm joined by Meb Gafour, Operations Director at On Device Research, and he's here to explain in a little more detail exactly why it's important to balance sample between control and exposed groups. So Meb, perhaps we can start by uh, exploring exactly what sample balancing actually means. Yeah, so uh, balancing uh, data is to adjust the profile of one sample group to match the profile of another sample group or population. Uh, in the case of advertising effectiveness, uh, we want to make sure that uh, the profile of the uh, sample group that's been exposed to the advertising is uh, matched uh, as, as best as possible to a non-exposed controlled sample group. Okay, that's great. But why is it so important when it comes to research? Uh, yeah, so the quick answer is that we want to compare apples with apples. Um, so we want to ensure that when we are comparing um, the classic brand metrics of um, awareness and consideration and purchase intentions and, uh, intention and so on um, across um, is the, the kind of control and exposed sample groups, that any differences uh, are meaningful with regards to the effectiveness of the advertising. So how does sample balancing actually work when it comes to control and exposed groups? Sure. Um, so there will be um, a number of profile dimensions um, that we want to maintain uh, between the two uh, sample groups, the controlled and exposed. Um, uh, typically, there will be a bunch of demographics and a couple of things that are specific to, to the study. Um, so we try our best um, when we are sort of... Um, sending out surveys uh, to both sample groups to ensure that, uh, to try and ensure that we, we kind of get in a, a sort of a balanced profile. Um, but uh, we, uh, until the survey results come in, we may not understand uh, all of those profile dimensions. Um, also, um, you can't guarantee that, uh, the, that both sample groups will respond to the survey invitations um, at the same rate. Uh, so uh, we deliberately um, ensure that we achieve more uh, survey completes um, than are required at total level. Um, so we end up with some service surplus completes. Um, and what this allows us to do is uh, whittle away some of those survey completes, um, so the surplus survey completes, um, using our own um, uh, iterative algorithm um, in order to end up with um, uh, the best possible similarity of profiles um, when comparing the uh, control group and the exposed uh, sample group. Okay, that's great. So in summary, what are the main factors that should always be taken into account when balancing sample? In summary, we want to ensure that we have like-for-like -like samples um, so that um, when comparing the uh, exposed and uh, the non-exposed uh, brand metrics. Um, so we do this by always ensuring that we have uh, a surplus of completes um, that, we can, that allows us to balance the two samples in order to achieve this. Thanks, Meb. We hope you found this short video today on sample balancing useful. But if you have any other questions, then please do contact us or visit our website at ondeviceresearch.com.